Assalamu alaikum. Today we are talking about the knee joint. Knee joint is one of the joints of the lower limb. It is one of the largest and most complicated joints in the body. It's a hinge type sign of your joint. It only allows flexion and extension and to some degree there are some rotation. It's formed by the articulation between the patella, femur and the tibia. Now if you look at this drawing, you can see that the articulation surface is between the femoral condyle and the tibial condyle below. There are some cartilaginous menisci connecting the, both. There is another bone sharing in this, it's called the patella, with lower end of the femur. So it is more high up rather than lower down. Now the rest is actually fat pads. And those fat pads are important to absorb the shock. The capsule of this joint is attached to the margin of the articular surface. So uh, the articular surface here is, is actually attached to the uh, attached with capsule. It is absent in front for the pouching of the synovial membrane forming bursa, which call the suprapatellar bursa. Those are the two articulating surfaces. Now the first articulating surface called tibiofemoral tib tibio surface, and it's between the tibia, the plateau of the tibia, and the condyles of the femur. The other surface is called the patellofemoral surface, that's with the patella. Now, concerned with the relation of the knee joint, the knee joints got anterior relation, posterior relation, medial, and lateral. The anterior relation is mostly there are there is bursa, it's called the prepatellar bursa, tenderness expansions of the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. So you can see um, uh, bursa and uh, of course the muscles of the quadriceps femoris. Now if you look posteriorly, the, um, it contains the content of the popliteal fossa, the nerve, the vein, the artery and the lymph nodes as we described in our previous lecture. Plus, there is the semimembranosus and semitendinosus and the biceps femoris tendons, gastrocnemius, medial and lateral heads, and the plantaris as well. If you look medially, you can see there is the sartorius uh, muscle is, uh, is here. And uh, of course, um, we have the gracilis semitendinosus. On the lateral side, you can see the bicep femoris tendon, you can see the common peroneal nerve. So all these structures is actually surrounding the knee joint, starting from anterior, posterior, lateral, and medial. Most of them are either muscles or tendons of muscles. The bursi here, or the uh, they're called the patellar bursas. Uh, we have several types of bursas. Now, bursa is a synovial fluid sac found between moving structure and a joint. Their aim is to reduce wear and tear of those structures. There are four bursa found in the knee joints. The first one is called the suprapatellar bursa. Now, the suprapatellar bursa is an extension of the synovial cavity of the knee joints itself, located between the quadriceps femoris and the femur. We have the prepatellar bursa. Now, the prepatellar bursa found between the apex of the patella and the skin. So, it is more vulnerable to be friction uh, and knee flexion and pressing. We have the infrapatellar bursa, and those found between the apex of the, uh, sorry, it says, it's, uh, have like two structures, deep and superficial. The deep bursa is between the tibia and the patella, or the patellar ligament, and the superficial lies between the patella 
or the patellar ligament and the skin. It's all so two superficial vertebrae. The last important one called the semimembranosa spursa. This is located posteriorly in the knee joint between the semimembranosa muscle and the medial head of gastrocnemius. And I think we did describe this in the uh, popliteal fossa lecture. There are other bursies um, that could be countered. There are bursa deep to the lateral head of gastrocnemius, uh, bursa deep to medial head of gastrocnemius, bursa deep to the biceps, bursa is uh, uh, like in the sartorius and the gracilis, but those are very small bursies and they are between the muscle and the bone underneath. But those four are the most important bursi. We have a condition in the um, and the bursa called bursitis. Now, bursitis is inflammation of the bursa. It's uh, due to friction between the skin and the patella, causing the prepatellar bursa to become inflamed. This one. So this is normal. This is inflamed, resulting in what we call the uh, clerk's knee, okay, or sometimes they call it housemaid's knee. So um, this is a, a kind of a friction due to, because it is superficial, um, the, why they call it housemaid, the yani housemaid, we used to whip the floor, okay, uh, on their knees. And that's why they uh, continuous friction. You can find it uh, as well in the people praying as well. So they have this kind of, of bursa or thickening here. ف يعني من من الصلاة كثرة الصلاة فتلقاها أيضا موجودة أيضا هاي. Now the menisci. The menisci of the knee joint. Um, we have what we call extra capsular and intra capsular ligaments. So menisci is a ligament. Now, talking about the extracapsular ligament, of course, we have the ligamentum patellae. The ligamentum patellae is attached to the lower border of the patella and the tibia tuberosity. It's separated by, from synovial membrane by infrapatellar pad of fat, from the tibia by deep infrapatellar bursa, and from skin by superficial infrapatellar bursa. And that's what you can see um, in the first uh, slide. There is as well the lateral, they call it the lateral collateral or the lateral fibular ligament. Now the lateral fibular is attached to the lateral condyle of the femur and the head of fibula. It is separated from the lateral meniscus okay, by a tendon of popliteus muscle. There is a medial collateral tibial ligament, and it is attached to the medial condyle of the femur and the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia. It is firmly attached to the medial meniscus. So there is differences between the two collaterals. The medial collateral is firmly attached to the meniscus. The lateral collateral is separated by the popliteus muscle tendon. There is as well what we call the oblique. Now the oblique popliteal ligament is derived from the semimembranosus tendon. And it is a strengthening posterior aspect of the capsule. So it is, it is uh, really a thickening of the capsule. Now talking about the intracapsular ligament, it is inside the joint. We have the transverse ligament. This is connect anterior horn of medial and lateral menisci and we have the cruciate and the cruciate ligament we have two cruciates we have anterior cruciate and a posterior cruciate now the anterior cruciate is attached to the anteriorly to the intercondylar area of the tibia and posterior part of the medial surface of lateral condyle of femur anterior cruciate 
anterior intercondylar area of tibia and posterior part of medial surface of lateral condyle of femur. Where is this site? Is? Just thought, and it has become tense when knee is fully extended. It's a prevent posterior displacement of femur on tibia and prevent tibia from pulling anteriorly with knee flexed. So it's preventing the tibia from going forward. And it's preventing the femur from going backward. The posterior cruciate ligament is attached to posterior intercondylar area of tibia and anterior part of lateral surface of medial condyle of femur. Again, it is attached to the posterior intercondylar area of tibia and anterior part of lateral surface of medial condyle of femur. It's become tense or taut when knee joint is flexed. So the reverse of the ACL, of the anterior cruciate. The anterior cruciate was taut when it's extended, when the knee is fully extended. This is the posterior one is when the knee is uh, fully flexed. It prevents anterior displacement of femur on tibia and prevent tibia from pulling posteriorly with knee flexed. So it's a preventing backward movement of the tibia when the knee is flexed and the femur forward movement uh, on tibia when the knee is flexed. So both working, both of a cruciate working when the knee are flexed, but they have reverse action. Talking about the menisci, now the menisci, as you can see, there are two semilunar cartilages. We have, of course, the medial meniscus and we have the lateral meniscus. Medial meniscus is more of C-shaped, is semicircular. The anterior horn is attached to the anterior intercondylar area of the tibia, and a posterior horn is attached to capsule and medial collateral ligament. So it is more relatively fixed in position. Now if you go to the lateral meniscus, it is more of a circular, it is O-shaped. The, the attachment, the anterior horn, is attached to the anterior intercondylar area uh, from the um, eminence, and the posterior horn is attached posterior intercondylar area behind intercondylar eminence. So the anterior horn is in the front of the intercondylar eminence, and the posterior horn is behind the intercondylar eminence. The band of fibrous tissue connect posterior horn to medial condyles of the femur to PCL, to the posterior cruciate ligament. Very important to know that lateral meniscus is less exposed to injury than medial meniscus. Why? As lateral meniscus is not attached to the lateral collateral ligaments. And that makes it uh, differ from the medial collateral. So medial collaterals have more uh, liable to uh, injuries, if you like. Now we can see that all these ligaments are in position. This is an anterior view. You can see the lateral collateral ligament. You can see the medial collateral ligament. You can see the medial meniscus firmly attached to the collateral. You can see the lateral meniscus, the O shape, the most fixed in positions, not attached. And then you can see the anterior cruciate ligament going from front to back and the posterior cruciate ligament going back as well. They are crossing to Rabat Salidi. So that's why the, their name cruciate, Latin for like a cross. Those um, ligaments plus the capsule can um, 
protect this um, knee joint. Now, injury to the collateral ligament is most common affecting the knee joint. It's caused by force being applied to the side of the knee. So when you hit on the side, the knee uh, the and the foot is fixed or placed on the ground, you got injuries of the collaterals. Damage to the collaterals can be uh, assessed by asking the patients to medially rotate and lateral rotate the leg. The medial collateral ligament is, if the medial collateral ligament is damaged, it is more than likely that the medial meniscus is, will be injured as well due to their attachment. Cruciate ligament, on the other hand, can be torn by hyperextension of the knee joint. We know that the cruciate act when the knee is flexed. So when the reverse is coming, like hyperextension or by application of large force to back of the knee with the joint like partly flexed, you can get injuries. Most common mechanism of the posterior cruciate ligament damage is dashboard injury. In Tundurub Sayara, Khadrajlek, Tundurub with dashboard. Fahad Akhtar Shirahi additional posterior cruciate. So this is occur when the knee is flexed. And the large force is applied to the shin of the of the foot. That will push the tibia posterior. Rahitfalaki tibia backward. This is more often is seen in car accident where the knee hits the dashboard. Or sometimes you can get what they call the unhappy triad or the blown knee. Now the blown knee, the knee is semi-flexed. There is an like a force um, hitting on the lateral side of the foot, the knee seems flexed. Now you can get this unhappy or the blown knee. What you will have? You will have the cruciates cut in. You will have the medial collateral ligament will be torn, will be cut, and it will take with it the medial meniscus as well. So anterior cruciate ligament, medial collateral ligament, and the medial meniscus. This is the unhappy triad or the blown knee. Now, movements for the knee joint. The joint here, as we mentioned, it is a hinge joint. So there are four main movements to the knee joint is allowed. The first one is a flexion. And the flexion is produced by the hamstring gracilis, sartorius, and popliteus muscle. And this is backward movement of the knee. Extension, this is forward movement, is produced by the quadriceps femoris, which insert by its tibial tuberosity. There are two other movements when the knee is flexed, you can get, it's called lateral rotation, and this is produced by the biceps femoris, medial rotation produced by semimembranosus, semitendinosus, gracilis, sartorius, and popliteus. Lateral and medial rotation can only occur when the knee is flexed, and if the knee is not flexed, the medial lateral rotations occur at the hip joint. That was the knee joints, ligaments, and uh, uh, of course, articulation surface, types, movements, and some injuries. We, uh, I advise you to go and read about maybe blood supply of the knee and nerve supply, which is as same as the nerve supply and blood supply of the muscles surrounding the joint. Thank you and good luck.